Municipal councils are elected by the residents of the municipality to make decisions regarding services, policies, and programs. A council decision is the decision of the municipality. In this video, we will talk about specific provisions within the Municipal Government Act that define the purpose of municipal councils and give municipal councils specific authority to act in their uh, defined geographic region. We'll talk about important duties and responsibilities that are listed throughout the legislation. And we'll also review some limits on the authority and powers of council and areas where council is prohibited from acting in certain ways. Remember, municipal councils receive all of their authority and power from uh, the Provincial Acts of Legislature, so the Municipal Government Act and regulations, and they are elected by the residents of their municipality and they're legally empowered to make decisions on behalf of citizens. In turn, municipal councils hire a chief administrative officer to help with the implementation of their decisions and the day-to-day -day management of the municipality. Section three of the Municipal Government Act defines the purposes of a municipal council. And there we'll find that municipal councils are responsible to provide good government. A main purpose of municipal council is to provide necessary or desirable services and facilities for that region. So that includes understanding and responding to citizen needs and desires. Councils are also in place to provide good stewardship for municipal assets. So this can be infrastructure, investments, cash, uh, human resources, and other assets that exist within the municipality. Another purpose is to maintain the municipality as a safe and viable community. So that means addressing safety concerns around police or fire and ensuring that the community uh, is viable in an economic and social capacity. Finally, council's role is also to encourage and enable public participation. And this is tied to the requirement for all council decisions to be made in public. So council uh, and the CAO should be thinking about how are we encouraging and enabling public participation in our municipal decisions and activities and other initiatives. There are a number of specific duties, roles and responsibilities of municipal councils outlined in the Municipal Government Act. In particular, Section 86.2 has a detailed list of duties of council, but there are other duties of council found throughout the MGA. It's important to understand for both you as the CAO and for council members themselves that council acts as a whole. So individual council members do not have any authority by themselves to carry out these roles and responsibilities. In fact, the act is very clear that all acts done by a council shall be done and decided by a majority vote of the council members present at a meeting. And of course, any exercise of powers by council or the municipality must be done by passing bylaws or resolutions. To be clear, the only way that a municipality or municipal council can act is through passing a bylaw or passing a resolution. We do cover some best practices and procedure around actually passing bylaws and resolutions in both the effective meetings video series and the municipal law video series. Note that it is council's responsibility to establish and ensure a procedural bylaw is in place. They also are responsible to establish a code of conduct for council members by bylaw and a code of conduct for employees that includes rules around conflict of interest. As you can see, section 86.2 has a long list of specific uh, responsibilities for council, including developing 
developing policies around services and programs and a requirement to evaluate those services and programs on a regular basis. Their responsibilities include appointing by resolution a chief administrative officer and they also must direct, manage, and supervise that person that they appoint. Section 88 of the Municipal Government Act talks about the ability for council to delegate specified powers. Section 88.1 does specify that council may, by bylaw, delegate specified powers, duties, or functions under this act, the MGA, or a bylaw to council committee or the CAO, unless the act or bylaw provides otherwise. It's worth noting here that uh, while all council decisions are to be made by bylaw and resolution, it's equally important that all council decisions are made in public unless there is a specific reason that enables uh, council to go into a closed meeting. And reasons to go into a closed meeting are listed within the MGA and are a topic we will explore further. As the CAO, part of what you can do to help council members understand their roles and responsibilities is to have a discussion early on with new council members about the importance of orientation uh, and training. Usually after an election period, you're going to have at least a few new uh, members join council. And so as the CAO, what you can do or what you can help with is to establish a priority and a schedule for training. So you may want to reach out to Municipal Affairs to see when they are offering training. Uh, usually there is council training offered uh, after each election period and you as the CIO might have to lead that effort. Ultimately, it is council's decision if they're going to take up the training or not, uh, but it's sure going to make uh, your job a lot easier if council members are, are well trained on their roles and responsibilities and principles of good governance. And they will certainly be thankful to you as their principal advisor for some guidance around that. Another tip would be to consider having a self-assessment uh, for council on an annual or biannual basis. It's important uh, that you um, can facilitate and encourage council to take time to reflect on their own governance practices, uh, their meeting decorum and other um, process and procedure to help them identify uh, where they may uh, need some help or there's opportunity for growth and also what their strengths are and, and what processes are working well. Municipal liability is a topic we will explore uh, more deeply in the municipal law session. However, when we talk about municipal council roles and responsibility, it's really important that council members understand that they are only protected from liability if they are acting within the authority and discretion granted to them by the Municipal Government Act. In other words, if council uh, makes decisions, creates programs, or takes action around issues or matters that are outside of their jurisdiction and damage occurs, or there's a complaint filed or a court case brought, the uh, liability protections don't exist uh, for activities and actions that uh, were carried on by council that were actually outside of the authority granted to them in the MGA. In other words, these two provisions here state that if the municipality has the authority to do something and they do it in good faith and there was no negligence involved, then they will not be held liable for deciding to do the thing, ceasing to do the thing, or admitting to do, omitting to do the thing. So again, a topic we'll come back to when we talk about municipal law, uh, but it's a good reminder generally for uh, you as the CIO and for municipal council that any time an activity, decision, or um, initiative is proposed, it's a good idea to, to double check and identify where the authority to take this action comes from. So one of the main issues with the uh, case study scenario is that the council member 
was perceived to be or was uh, directing employees. You'll see in section 93.6 of the Municipal Government Act, a very clear statement uh, that says no council member or member of a council committee shall publicly or privately instruct or direct an employee of the municipality except through the chief administrative officer. So it's safe to say that if uh, Sandra from the case study was not involving the chief administrative officer in the uh, request or instruction for the employee to do uh, X, Y, or Z, then that council member was uh, acting con contrary to the Municipal Government Act and outside their individual authority. So one of the main issues with the uh, case study scenario is that the council member was perceived to be or was uh, directing employees. You'll see in section 93.6 of the Municipal Government Act a very clear statement uh, that says no council member or member of a council committee shall publicly or privately instruct or direct an employee of the municipality except through the chief administrative officer. So it's safe to say that if uh, Sandra from the case study was not involving the chief administrative officer in the uh, request or instruction for the employee to do uh, X, Y, or Z, then that council member was uh, acting con contrary to the Municipal Government Act and outside their individual authority. So a few suggestions around steps that you can take as the CIO in a situation like this are as follows. First of all, make sure you have all the information as the CIO before you uh, take any steps to speak with either the employee or the council person. So for example, uh, as CIO, it's your responsibility to ensure that financial statements and information that council may request is provided to council. So you want to check to see if this is being done. It would also be a good idea to go back and review the finance committee terms of reference so you understand the context that the council person is operating within and what uh, activities they may be trying to carry out or what goals they might be trying to achieve uh, with their actions in relation to uh, their participation on the finance committee. You'll also want to review any other uh, municipal policies or bylaws regarding uh, municipal financial management. Once you've done your homework, it would be appropriate to ask to speak to that council member privately and be prepared to explain to that person how their actions are outside the Municipal Government Act authority. So be prepared to uh, speak to sections 93.6 in this case around directing employees and use the act and any policies that are uh, applicable as an objective criteria for guiding the conversation. Finally, you should assume that the council member is 
seeking information and acting in a particular way for the benefit of the community. So don't assume any negative intent, but go into the conversation with an open mind and seek input from that council member about their needs and concerns. Finally, connect with the staff person uh, that you are dealing with and make sure that they know you are addressing the issue and that you will monitor it into the future. There are a few specific uh, additional limitations on the authority of council or prohibitions as they are listed in the Municipal Government Act. Section 92 one is very clear that council shall not appoint a member of the council to serve and no member shall serve as an employee of the municipality or a control corporation established by council in any capacity. So this means council members cannot be hired as the CAO, financial officer, planner, development officer, enforcement officer, or public works personnel. Furthermore, council cannot undertake any of the duties that would normally be associated with those duties of an employee uh, of either the municipality or a controlled corporation. In particular, they cannot undertake these duties uh, for pay or on a volunteer basis. Finally, there are a number of powers and duties listed in Section 88.3 that Council shall not delegate. Council shall not delegate its power or duties to pass a resolution or bylaw. They cannot delegate their power to appoint, suspend, or revoke the appointment of a person to the position of the CAO. And there are other responsibilities around holding public hearings under the MGA and hearing and deciding appeals uh, with respect to bylaws or the MGA that council uh, must take on themselves and cannot uh, delegate to another uh, individual or committee. Where the Municipal Government Act provides that council shall, by resolution or bylaw, do X, Y, or Z, council cannot delegate the actual decision making. Council members have been elected to make decisions on behalf of the residents, so those decisions need to ultimately be decisions of council. That being said, there are going to be times that council relies on the chief administrative officer or other staff members to do some of the work uh, associated with the duties and the decisions uh, of council. So while they can't, uh, while council can't relinquish their decision making responsibility, they can certainly uh, from time to time delegate duties around those decisions uh, to be executed by others. One of the questions we sometimes hear is about the smaller municipalities who perhaps don't have the resources to comply with all of the requirements of the Municipal Government Act. We've heard stories of councils that say we can't do this because we are a small municipality and they might pass a resolution stating that we aren't going to meet this or that requirement. So when these situations come up regarding an obligation under the MGA, the question is whether or not municipalities can choose to relinquish or opt out of those requirements. Section 180 of the Act has a long list of optional powers and authorities in the areas of jurisdiction, sometimes called spheres of jurisdiction, available to councils. If in that section or elsewhere in the Act it says may, then council has the choice of whether or not they want to enter into that area. So animal control is a good example of this. Some councils decide they want to take that on, while others might just say that's, that's much more than we can handle. Now, where the Act says council shall, council does not have the discretion to say we're too small. Basically, the MGA says, if you're a government, this is the baseline of how you have to operate. And there are penalties for situations where a council says, no, we're too small, or we aren't doing that, or we aren't interested in that area. And while there's a spectrum of consequences, one of the most final penalties available to the minister is to dismiss the council. So absolutely, if it's a responsibility or a duty that goes along with all of the powers of being a government, you have to meet those duties. And if you can't do it on your own, that's where you have conversations about sharing services or how you might collaborate with others. But those duties are there for a reason. They are there to protect the public and to meet all of those goals of accountability, transparency, and accessibility. Mm -hmm.